morning, good morning. May God bless you today. We are so grateful to be back again in the house of the Lord. We thank God for your presence. Thank God for another opportunity to be able to give His name praise, to be able to worship Him and adore Him in the beauty of holiness. For God is good and He is God and God alone. And we're going to praise Him today. Right where you are in your house. Right where you are, stop what you're doing. Let's give God a praise. 
the name of our God. That's what we come to do, to give him praise and give him glory for all that he has done for us. Amen. We're just grateful to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Thank God for you tuning in. Amen. Seeing our program. Invite somebody. Share this with your friends and family. We are thankful to God for those that are scrolling by, looking. Amen. If you stop long enough just to check us out, we thank God for your presence being with us this morning. We come to worship our mighty God. Amen. We come for no foolishness, no more dumb fashion, but we come to give him praise and glory for what he has done. Because he's been good to us. Even in the midst of a pandemic, God has still been good to us. He's good right now. Amen. Amen. We're going to have our opening scripture by all the neighbors to come and to give us our scripture reading for the morning. Amen. And we will move forward. In the Lord. Amen. Amen, Pastor. Amen. Good morning, Saints. Good morning. Good morning. I'll read to you from Matthew, the 28th chapter, start at the 16th. Yes. Then the eleven disciples went away to Galilee, into a mountain Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. Amen. But some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given to me yes, in heaven and in earth. Yes, Go ye therefore yes. and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of Jesus, yes. and the Father and the Son, yes, yes. and all the Holy Ghost, yes, yes. teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded yes. you. And lo, I am with you always. But, oh God, I know that you can bring comfort in a dying hour. 
Lift up their bow down here and let them know that we will look to the hills from whence coming our help. For our help comes from the Lord. We thank you today, Lord. We come down asking that your presence would dwell with us today in this place. As we worship your name and give you glory for who you are, we ask God that your spirit would dwell with us today. Guide us in days that are coming.
Ain't nobody keep you like Jesus. In the midnight hour, he can keep you. When trouble rise, he can keep you. things and we see things 
that let us know that this is not right. Yes, sir. This something needs to be done. Yeah. And my brothers and sisters, I, I want to just talk and maybe teach today because we are living in a time in which we've, ne we've seen stuff that we've never seen before. I've never known in my 58 years of a church being empty on Easter. Never heard about that. Never known that. Never had been able to go into a bank with a mask on. Never thought I had to do that. Now, that was one thing you don't, one place you don't go into, not with a mask on, in a bank. Now we're having to wear them everywhere. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're in a mess. And my brothers and sisters, the reason that we are in a mess, we have to go back to the beginning. Yeah, yeah. We have to go back to find out why, discover why, how we got in this mess. Yeah. And the Bible says that in the beginning God created man yeah. and he put him in a garden. And placing him in that garden, he gave him every comfort life could have. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He gave him not only the garden, but he gave him communion with him. Right. Yeah. Where, where man had communion with God. There was no disconnect. There was no problems when man was created. But somewhere along the way, God had given his order, he had given his law. And he said to him, he said to the man in Genesis 2 and 16 and 17, he said, the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden you may eat freely. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it. For in the day that you eat thereof, you will surely die. Yes, yes. The penalty is irreversible. Uh -huh. yeah. God had given the penalty for sin. Yeah. Yeah. That if you eat of this tree, you will surely die. I want to talk about just for a few minutes on that the penalty is irreversible. You can't reverse this, this penalty. There are some things you can reverse in life. You, you know, if you if you if you are at a certain age and you 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 you, you maybe don't have any hair, you can reverse the process. You don't have a, a, a nose that you like. You can reverse the process. But when it comes to sin and the penalty for sin is irreversible. He told Adam and Eve that the day you eat of that tree, you will surely die. So the penalty is irreversible. But look also at that the punishment is irrevocable. Look at what it says in Ezekiel 18, 20. It says, the soul that sinned shall die. The child shall not share the guilt of the parent, nor the parent the guilt of the child. For the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked will be upon them. What is he saying? Every tub got to stand on his own part. I can't that my sin won't be transmitted to you. If, if you sin, you you got to deal with your sin. Yes, yes, I have to deal with my sin. Yes, so not only is the penalty irreversible and the punishment irrevocable, but the price is unaffordable. He says, Jesus says in Mark eight. 36 and 37, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world 
and lose his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? The price is too high. You can't afford it. Have you ever been somewhere and you get somewhere and you, you didn't have enough money to afford what you went to buy? <laughs> it's disappointing, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It hurts your feelings. It, it embarrasses you. And I've learned over the years when they tell me uh, you can apply for credit, I've learned to pass them folks on back. Because yeah, yeah. they don't need us telling me what I already know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amen. But the price is unaffordable. Yes, the price of sin is so high, you and I can't afford to pay the price. Which leads me to my last point. And I've been trying to get here all this time. Yeah, yeah. Even though the, the penalty is irreversible and the punishment irrevocable and the price is unaffordable, the payment is acceptable. Somebody ought to help me here. For the Bible says in Romans 6.23 that the wages of sin is death. But, I'm glad there's a but there. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes, my sin may be irreversible. And my punishment may be irrevocable. And the price may be unaffordable. But I'm glad that the payment is accepted. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, and I'm glad to be in that crowd, the whosoever crowd, don't have to be born on a certain side of the track. Don't have to come from royalty. Don't have to have my name written in the who's who. But whosoever that believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Payment is acceptable. The penalty, yes, is irreversible. Can't change the penalty. For the penalty of sin is still death. <laughs> Spiritual death that can lead to physical death. Yeah, yeah. And so what I have to do is, is I have to have a substitute. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have to have somebody that's able. Because yeah, yeah. if you notice all these words that I used this morning, in in A B L E. And I'm glad that in the final analysis, the payment is able. The payment will satisfy my sin problem. Well, God said, well, I'm going to put enmity in between man and his sin. And I'm going to send my son through 40 and two generations. I'm going to send him down through the the migrants of time. And he's going to he's gonna pay the penalty for all sin, for all time, for all who believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is a. Yes, so God, in the process of time, sends his son. Yeah, yeah. Through 42 generations. Yeah. Stopping by most. Mm -hmm. What are you going Jesus. Jesus said, I'm going to fix your problem. All right. When you're going, stopping by Ezekiel. Yes, sir. And he said, Ezekiel said, Well, where are you going, Jesus? Yes, Jesus said, I'm going to fix your problem. Yes. Stopping by Daniel, Mike, uh, Nahum, and Abel. Right. Where you going, Jesus? Oh, I'm going to fix your problem. Stopping by Jane Ray. Stopping by uh, Dennis one Young. Where are you going, Jesus? I'm going to fix your problem. Well, it was on a hill far away. Stood it on 
bloody cross where the dearest and best for the world of lost sinners was slain. He died one Friday. That's what the old preacher said. He died, died to the moon, slipped away in blood. He died, he died to the soldier said, Surely this must be the Son of God. Can't you see him dying on the cross? Bow his head, on his head. Amen. Make it do what it do. 
Amen. So it's not about the elements, but it's about Jesus.
Amen. And afterwards, they sung a hymn and they went out to the Mount of Olives. Amen. We don't have a Mount of Olives, but we got some other places where you can drive through. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We just thank God for your presence being with us today. Amen. Thank God for you listening in, tuning in. If you, if you need prayer, contact us. If you look for a church home, contact us. Go to our website and get in touch with us so that we can communicate and fellowship one with another. I want to reach out and touch out. I can't put my actual arms around you, but we can by virtue. Amen. By virtue of television and all other means. So as we get ready to depart from this place, we pray God's blessing on the life. May God continue to bless you and keep you. Download the Zoom app. We want to see you win.